Well, I do want to uh, wish all of our mothers in our church a very happy Mother's Day. And today, as we open God's Word together, I want to look at a few passages that talk about, first of all, our attitude and response towards our parents, and specifically our mothers. And also today, we're going to look at a passage in the New Testament about what mothers and spiritual mothers and and uh, women, how they can be discipling others. So this morning, I've entitled this sermon, Honor Your Mother. And so even by that title, you might uh, guess where we'll be going first in God's Word. But as I think of my own memories of my mother, sometimes it's very difficult to to come up with one single memory because there are so many good memories I have of my own mom, that she was always there. She was so faithful. She was the anchor and the rock of our family, that no matter what, no matter what I was facing at school or at work or um, with my friends or even amongst my siblings, my mother was always someone I could go to and trust and rely on. And so I have great love for my own mother, and I know that many, if not most of us, share that love for our mothers, share that fondness. And I also know that there are those who, who do not have great memories of their mothers, or may not even uh, have met their mothers in some cases. And so that's, that's a source of sorrow and, and, and an emptiness in their lives. And so just as we we look to God to to heal those those pains and and those voids that may be in our hearts, we can trust that God is the ultimate parent, the ultimate father who will care for us and who will uplift us and watch over us and provide for us no matter what. And so this morning, I want to begin by drawing our attention to what our duty is, what God expects of us in in how we treat our mothers. And so this morning, I would invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to begin with to the book of Exodus chapter 20. And we'll just be looking at verse 12 together. And you may recognize this passage already as as the passage where God delivers through Moses the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are a summary of the entire law of God. And so verse 12 says this, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And so we see that one of the Ten Commandments specifically talks about honoring our parents. You shall honor your father and your mother. Out of all the things that God could have used to summarize his holy law, he makes sure that there's one commandment in there that tells us how to treat our parents. And I love that first word, honor. It's the word, in Hebrew, it's the word kavad. And the noun form of that is kavod. I love to say that word, kavod, um, K-A-V-O-D. It means literally glory. And, and it means to, to actually to be heavy, to weigh down. I always get the uh, picture in my mind when I think of kavod of of a a military general. You know those pictures of of generals and they have so many medals and ribbons on their chest that you think, wow, that that must be pretty heavy. They are weighed down with those honors that they have received. And so this is the idea here in the fifth commandment. Honor your mother. Honor your father and your mother. But we're, of course, today we're focusing in on the mother side of things. Weigh your mother down with honor. Bring glory to your mother. Make her so heavy and and weighty with honor that she can barely stand up. That's the idea behind this. Bring honor to your parents. 
And what strikes me about this verse whenever I read it in this commandment form is how in that day, in that age, all that would have had to been said was honor your father. And that should have been enough. But God specifically adds, and your mother. Because God is just as concerned about mothers as he is for fathers. It's almost as though he's saying, yes, honor your father. That's very important. But do not forget your mother as well. Your mother is worthy of equal honor as to your father. In that day, many people would think, yes, I must honor and respect and fear my father. But my mother is sort of off to the side, and I, I don't need to worry much about her. But here God is specifically saying, honor your mother as well as your father. And if you look in the next chapter, chapter 21, in verse 15, it says this, Whoever strikes his father or his mother shall be put to death. And verse 17, Whoever curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. What do these commandments teach us? It reminds us how seriously God takes the honor of one's parents. That if you are just to strike either your father or your mother, if you are the child, you are liable under the death penalty in ancient Israel. Or even if you curse your parents, either your father or just your mother, you shall be put to death under the judgment of the law. And so this tells us, when we take these three verses together, these three commandments together, that we are to honor our parents, we are not to hit or strike our parents, we are not even to curse our parents or speak about them badly, under pain of death, this shows us that God is seriously concerned with how we treat our parents. And that's what I want us to think about a little bit today. And did you notice in all three of those commandments, again, it's or your mother and your mother. God is equally concerned that we honor our mothers just as much as we honor our fathers. And so what we see here is that we are called to treat our parents in a very special way. But do you notice here in all three of those commandments in chapter 20 and chapter 21, how there is no conditions attached to that, to these commands. It doesn't say, honor your mother if she is a good mother. Or, don't hit your mother as long as she's a good and loving mother. Or don't curse your mother as long as she's really nice to you. There's no conditions attached to that. It's simply honor your mother. Don't curse your mother. Don't hit your mother. Bring her glory and praise and respect through how you treat her. And what that teaches us is these commandments are not dependent on whether we have good mothers or not. The commandment from God is that we are to honor our parents, honor our mother, regardless of what kind of mother she is or she may be. And that can be a very hard and bitter pill to swallow. Do you mean, God, that, that you want me to honor my mother when she has treated me so badly? Do you mean that, God, you, you want me to honor my mother even when she maybe has abandoned me or um, has, has pointed out all my faults or is overly critical about me when she just has not been a good mother at all? Or, or God, do you want me to honor her even when I don't like her very much? I think the scriptural answer is yes. We are called to honor our mothers regardless of whether they are good mothers or not. And why is that? It is because this commandment, especially in the Ten Commandments, is, is reflective of the honor that we give to God. That regardless of 
how well or how poor our mothers have been, the honor that we give to them is actually given to the God who is standing behind them. And so just as the New Testament talks about uh, wives submitting and honoring husbands, even if they're unbelievers, even if they're bad husbands, it's because they're actually honoring Christ. Or it talks about how, how children should obey their, their parents, and the assumption is even if they're not the best parents. Or how slaves should obey their masters, even if they are not good masters. It's because they are honoring the great master who stands behind them. And so the honor that we give to our parents, the honor that we give to our mothers, is actually honor that we're giving to God. Because there are many places in scripture where God reminds us that the only authorities that we have over us in our lives have been placed there by God himself. And so when we don't bring honor to the authorities that God has placed in our lives, we are not bringing honor to the God who put them there in the first place. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament can even talk about how we are to honor the, the king or the, the governing authority or the emperor. And in his day, that was Emperor Nero. And Emperor Nero was not anyone deserving of honor. And yet we are called as Christians to honor whatever authority that God has placed over us. Of course, if the authority is going against God's will and God's word and, and telling us to do things that, that go against God's word, then we are not called to, to listen to them. But still we're to show them the respect and honor that God expects us to show them. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving to you. Of course, we know from the New Testament in Ephesians 6 verses 1 to 4 that when children are minors, when children are still in the household, the, the honor that they are to give their parents is, looks like obedience, that they are to obey their fathers and mothers. And that's what the Apostle Paul talks about there. But what happens when we leave the home? What happens when we are adults, when we are no longer under the authority, the direct authority of our parents? How do we honor them in that case? How do we seek to honor our mothers? And I hope that's something that we'll take away from this sermon today. Um, maybe you already feel like you honor your mother in many different ways. But let us also strive to, to honor our parents and our mothers specifically even more than we're already doing. Let us seek to deepen the honor that we give them. Even we can ask a hard question of them and ask our mothers, Mom, do you feel honored by me? And your mother may tell you, no, not really. And that might be a hard thing to swallow. Because then you may feel, well, I'm failing what God has called me to do in this relationship. But you can ask, how, mom, how can you feel honored in how I treat you? And that's how we can learn and grow in honoring our mothers. But the question I brought up was, how do we continue to honor our parents after we've left home, after we have come into adulthood? Well, I would invite you to turn in your Bibles with me to, to the teaching of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. And in this context, in Matthew 15, Jesus is contending with the Pharisees, because the Pharisees are getting after uh, Jesus' disciples for not washing before they eat. And so the Pharisees view the disciples as breaking their pharisaical traditions. And so we see how Jesus responds in Matthew 15, looking at verse 3, because the, the Pharisees have uh, pestered Jesus and asked him, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders, for they do not wash their hands when they eat? And so verse 3, we see Jesus answer. It says, he answered them, and why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded 
honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father or mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father or his parents. And so Jesus, the, the aim of Jesus here is not to specifically address this commandment, but what I want us to take away from this is, is the fact that Jesus uses this commandment in the first place to illustrate how the Pharisees are overthrowing the, the holy commandments of God for the sake of following their own tradition. So first of all, in verse 4, Jesus quotes two of the verses we've already looked at from the book of Exodus. In chapter 20, he quotes the fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother. And then from Exodus 21, the verse we already looked at, whoever reviles or curses father or mother must surely die. So Jesus brings those two verses together to show how important the honor of parents is in the eyes of God. And by using this specific example, he could have used many other examples. He had many to choose from. But he uses this example specifically to show that in the eyes of Jesus, not just of God, but in the eyes of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, honoring your father and your mother is something that is very important. Something that Jesus takes very seriously. But what was the Jewish or the Pharisaical tradition they used to say, well, if anyone tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. What does that mean? Well, that's talking about an adult child, an adult son, who ought to be taking care of his parents in their older age. But what this wicked son is saying is, I'm going to give all the money that I would have used to support you, my mother and father, in your old age. I'm actually going to give that to the temple. Or if we use our modern, uh, our modern context, I'm going to give that to the church. And that sounds, all, that sounds very pious and holy. And the, the Pharisees said, yes, that's okay. That's a good thing. Give your money, all the money that you would have used to support your parents in their old age. Give that to the temple. Give that to honor God. But Jesus is saying, no, that's, that's actually wrong. You are taking the, the money that would have been used to honor their, your parents in their old age, and you're using a pretense, a, a pious pretense, of giving that to the temple or to the church. Jesus says that's, that's wrong. You can't use a tradition to overthrow the commandment of God. You must honor your father and mother. And so we see here that Jesus is talking about adult children. So we know that minors, children still in the home, are called to honor their parents through obedience, through doing what their parents uh, tell them to do, to to being under their authority. But here we see how Jesus is saying that adult honor towards your parents takes the, the form of providing for them. And of course, in Jesus' day, there was no uh, retirement plans and, and people didn't retire at age 65 if they even lived that long. Older folks, elderly folks, were dependent upon their families, upon their children to provide for them in their elderly years. And so Jesus is saying that the, the honor shown to father and mother takes the form, or one of its forms, is through providing for your parents. And so we see that, that honoring our mothers on Mother's Day today takes the form of provision. And that doesn't necessarily mean financial support, though if we have it, we have those opportunities, we should be supporting our, our parents in that way. But we, we can think in a larger sense of, of providing for my mother, providing for her in various ways, looking out for her, seeing where she needs help. How can I bring honor to her, not just with my words, though that is very important and that's key, that we should always be honoring our mothers, with our words, 
but also with my hands. How can I bring honor to my parents? Because as we've seen, this is a big deal to God. And as we see here in Matthew chapter 15, this is a big deal for Jesus. It's important for the Lordship of Christ over our lives in how we interact with our families, how we treat one another. And so I invite us all to give sober thought to how we are honoring our parents, how we are bringing them honor. Like I say, both with our mouth, and also with our, our lives and, and how we do things. But I also wanted to talk this morning about the other side of things. We've talked about the, the, the duty of, of the child towards the mother. But let's also take a moment to consider what godly motherhood looks like. And again, as we often say... Um, Today is a day where we celebrate mothers of all kinds, and that includes spiritual mothers. So maybe you are a woman hearing this today, and you are not yet a mother, or um, maybe you're past the age of being a mother, or you don't have the opportunity to be a mother, um, or um, your children are grown up, or maybe you have even lost beloved children. Whatever situation you find yourself in as a mother, you can look around you to the people around you to be a spiritual mother and a discipler to those around you. And, and this is a very scriptural idea. So if you turn with me in your Bibles then to the book of Titus chapter 2, we see here in the Apostle Paul, writing this letter to T Titus, he says in chapter 2, he's giving instructions to all the different age groups of the church. He begins with the older men, then he moves to the older women, he refers to the younger women, and then he ends up with the younger men. But I want to draw our attention to, to especially what older women are called to be doing in their Christian lives. So Titus chapter 2, verse 3 says, older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Let's just start at the end of what Paul says there. He says, the reason older women are to be teaching younger women, the reason that older women are to be spiritual mothers to those around them in the context of the church is so that the word of God may not be reviled. And in this context, the word of God refers specifically to the gospel. Paul is concerned about the gospel here. He's saying if we're out preaching the gospel and, and telling people about Jesus Christ and eternal life that can be had through the forgiveness of sins through Christ's work on the cross, and yet the churches that are gathering are filled with, with lazy men and women who are doing whatever and, and are unruly and are... are um, doing all things that they're not supposed to, and there's young men running around being disobedient, then what begins to happen? Then the gospel itself suffers in the eyes of those who are listening to it. And so Paul says, for the sake of good order and for the sake of living out the Christian life, so that the gospel, the word of God, the message of God may not be reviled, these are the things older women, or we could call them spiritual mothers, are to be seeking to do. So as I said, we've talked about what spiritual children or, or real children are supposed to be doing and showing that honor to their parents, to their mothers. And here in this text we see one of the duties of a Christian mother in the context of the church as a spiritual mother. It says, once again, older women 
Spiritual mothers likewise are to be reverent in behavior. That means they are to set a good example for everyone around them. Not slanderers. And that includes um, criticisms. That includes gossip. That includes you know, all those ways in which we can uh, use our tongues to, to tear down instead of to build up. Or it says, or slaves to much wine. Older women, along with everybody else, we're called to be sober-minded in how we think. But it goes on, and Paul says, they are to teach what is good. Spiritual mothers are called to be teachers. Teachers of good things. Especially to the younger women among them. To train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands. These are the things that build up the church. That when older women are mentoring and discipling younger women in the church, when they're teaching them how to, to grow in God's word and to grow in the gospel, as they are setting that example, then this is how the church or one of the ways that the church grows healthy and strong together. We see that, that women are key to this. And so we, we ask the ladies in our church, do you need a spiritual mother? Do you need to be a spiritual mother to someone else? Are there other women in the church younger than yourself, needing direction, needing advice? Not criticism, but someone to come alongside them, to walk beside them, to encourage them, to point them to the Word of God, to point them to holy living. What a beautiful thing that would be in our church if we began to see more and more of that. One of the things I'm so blessed by is our ladies' Bible study and how there are different generations represented. I'd say if we broke it down, you could see three generations of women represented in our ladies' Bible study. And what I love is how the older women are teaching the younger women, younger women are encouraging and teaching older women, and everybody is growing together. And so that's not necessarily an advertisement to to join the ladies' Bible study, but rather to think about ways that, that we can be doing that outside of the ladies' Bible study as well. How can you be a spiritual mother to those around you? And of course, we focus a lot on the ladies today, but that's the same challenge for men. Men, if you are a Christian, you are called to disciple someone else. Men, how can you be a spiritual father in the context of the church. And so as we think about Mother's Day and the duties that children owe their parents and the opportunities we should be looking for as Christians to be spiritual mothers or spiritual fathers, I just want to close today by thinking about the gospel because what is the gospel of Mother's Day? How do we go from this what we've been talking about, to the gospel. How do we turn our hearts to the good news of Jesus Christ? Well, as we said, when God gave the commandment, honor your father and your mother, he did that in order to show us ultimately that we should be honoring God as our ultimate father, as our ultimate authority. When we dishonor our parents, we are also dishonoring God. When we honor our parents, we are honoring the God who is behind them, who has set them at, uh, in our lives as our parents. And so God gives that commandment. But the problem is, is because of our sin, we have fallen short of God's standards. And so we have all dishonored God. We have not honored him as our father in so many different ways. And so we are under his judgment and his wrath. In the Old Testament, in the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 6, it says this. This is God speaking. And he says, A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I am a father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts to you. 
So God says, I'm a father, and I'm to be honored, so where's my honor? And I hope we feel the discomfort of that, that we know that we have dishonored God in many ways in our lives, when we have sought our own ways and our own paths and to do our own thing through our sinfulness and transgression of God's holy law. And so that's the great problem. God deserves honor, but we have dishonored him uh, through our sin. But the great solution is Jesus. He is the one who honored his Father perfectly. Listen to some of these verses out of the book of John. John chapter 5, 19 to 20. It says, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees his Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him, so that you may marvel. So whatever the Father does, the Son is right there doing the same things. Then a few verses later in verse 30, Jesus says, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus did not come to do his own will, the way Adam and Eve did their own will, the way we lived in our lives before Christ that, that we wanted to do our, our own will. No, Jesus, as the faithful and obedient Son, did not come to do his own will, but to do the will of God. And then John chapter 8, verses 18 to 29, So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. That sums up Jesus' whole life right there. He always did the things that were pleasing to God. And a few verses later in chapter 8, verses 48 to 50, the Jews are challenging Jesus here, and they say to him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? And Jesus answered, I do not have a demon. But I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. So, Jesus, so God, as our ultimate Father, deserves our honor. We have dishonored him through our sin. And so we are under his condemnation. But Jesus, as the perfect and obedient and faithful Son, he honored his Father. He always did his Father's will. He did not do his own will. Even all the way to the cross. Jesus was that obedient. He submitted to death, even the death of a cross. For our sake, he fulfilled the Father's will. He said, it is finished. And he died. He gave up his life. He, he shed his life blood for our sake so that our sin would be washed away because the penalty has been paid through the death of Jesus Christ. It's been vindicated through his glorious resurrection. And so what is our response to that? Of course, our response is to humble ourselves in repentance before God. To say, yes, God, I have dishonored you. But Jesus is the perfect son. And it's in him I trust, in his work on the cross. And out of that faith in Jesus Christ, that is when we can truly honor God through honoring our parents. Because our, our hearts have been changed. Our lives have been recreated as new creations. We have a new self that we've put on. And so out of that desire to please God as our Heavenly Father, as we imitate Him as dearly beloved children, that love for our neighbor can begin with love, true love, forgiving love, respectful love, honoring love to our parents. So that our honor of our mothers, even on this Mother's Day, the ultimate source is not just because we're thankful to them for all that they've done for us, not just because we love them because they're our flesh and blood and they gave birth to us, but our ultimate reason for honoring them is Jesus Christ and the grace we've received through him from God. And so this Mother's Day, I pray a blessing upon all of us, but especially our mothers and our spiritual mothers. And may we all be on the lookout 
for how we can encourage one another in the faith, to point one another to the gospel and to the word of God, so that we may be encouraged, that we may seek to, to honor all those that God has placed over us. But especially this day, let us honor our mothers and let us seek to do that more and more. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you would give us the strength and the wisdom, the insight for how we can honor our mothers more. For how we can seek to honor you through the way that we treat our mothers, to the way we treat our parents. Whether they are good and, and deserving of that honor, or even if they are not deserving of that honor. Because the honor we pay them is actually honor paid to you. And so, Father, I pray that you would be with us all this day to help us realize just how much you have given us and the grace you've poured out upon us through our mothers. And may that lift our eyes up even higher to the grace that you have poured out upon us through Jesus Christ. That you, our loving Heavenly Father, did not leave us in our dishonorable state under your wrath and condemnation, but you provided a perfect, obedient, and faithful Son who always did your will, who always honored you, and who always did what you taught him to do. And so as we trust in that perfect Son, we can be adopted as your children to worship you and to have the hope of eternal life spent with you. So Father, we thank you for these things. May Mother's Day not only point our hearts towards our mothers, but may it point our eyes towards Jesus Christ and the gospel. Father, all the glory is yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.